Welcome to Pew View My Therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen. I'm actually really excited about today's episode. Um, I think I've spent a lot of time thinking about this and it's like, honestly, every, I say this all the time, but every time I think I'm healed, I'm not. This is one of the things where I really thought that I, it was not an issue for me, that I was good, that I was like, I was healed. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, I, I don't even want to, should I restart the intro? Because like, I really want to get my thoughts out fluidly. But I feel like that's just not going to happen today. I've been having a hard time communicating lately. So I hope that I have a better time communicating today. Because um, that's when it really matters. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do while you're here is to, okay, um, follow if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Spotify, follow as well. Leave a rating and a review if you like the podcast and share it with a friend of yours, okay? We're trying to grow the girly community. And actually, I have another question to ask of you right off the bat, okay? So I am... We're creating a community, a community, and I'm I'm kind of trying to figure out like what should we be called? Like, oh my god, this is so <laughs> okay. What should we be called? Because like I came up like with a couple ideas, right? So I had the Vine Philo Wellness Club, love that. Um, Divine Therapeutics, okay. Or, um, I don't know, if you have, like, another idea, leave it in the comments below. The Vineys, the Fifis, the Therapeepees, I don't know, y'all. I uh, Rihanna has her navy, and I have no idea how she even came up with that, okay? Um, Baby Tate has her tater tots. See, that makes sense, though. Divine, her Vineys, her little vines, her Vine Vines, I don't fucking know, bitch. But I feel like we need a name. And, like, the, I've seen the name come up a lot of times, like, when I go live on TikTok. Like, a lot of people will say, like, oh, this is, like, a little tea party. But I don't really know how I would incorporate, like, therapy and wellness, like, mentally with, like, a tea party. I don't know if that makes sense. But anyways, leave your thoughts in the comments, okay? Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask of you was, oh, I'm basically going to do my outro in the intro today. So if you're watching on YouTube, you heard that. Uh, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, on Instagram and Twitter. My name is Vine Philo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O. Maybe we should be called the philosophers. We'll ponder on that one. I like that one though. She kind of ate with that one. The fuck? Anyways, so um, yeah, no, that was good. That was good. I like the philosophers. The Philosopher's Wellness Club. Do we like that? Are we eating? Are we eating or are we starving? You let me know. So, um, and then on TikTok, I am defile, D-P-H-I-L-E. Okay, now that that is out of the way, the next thing we're going to address, yes, I know it's giving halloween -y. We're full in Halloween. I am in my Halloween bag. I am in my jack-o'-lantern. I know it is like, it's like the 1st of September. It's going to be the 2nd of September, actually, when I post this. I'm actually recording this on the 31st of August. Do I give a fuck that Halloween is two full months away, 60 whole days? No. It's my world and we're living in it. Okay, and in and in girl world, in divine world, spooky season starts the minute that the minute I feel a fucking breeze, bitch. It doesn't even. I don't even need to see September. Uh, blah, da, 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 da. That's a bunch of logistics we're not gonna get into. The minute I feel a fucking winter breeze in the summer air, I'm like fall is here. Okay, uh, Starbucks has their pumpkin spice. My pumpkins are out, okay? So I don't want to hear, it's too early for Halloween. Keep the bad vibes to yourself, okay? Um, I think, I think I did a pretty good job decorating. I'm gonna have my little pumpkins. I got my little candles. I got my little... My little black roses. I don't know if you can see them. But I like it. She's cute. We're back to the green. We're back to the green. I like it. I take a lot of pride in my set decoration because I feel like it's an expression of myself. I literally cannot wait until I have a whole house to decorate. Y'all don't understand. I'm finna, I'm finna go in to decorate my house. You have no idea, right? 
Um, but anyway, so the topic that we're going to be talking about today is going to be so fun, but you know, as always, we're going to keep it real. We're going to talk the real truth about it. And, um, today we're going to be talking about being a bad bitch. Yeah. Being a bad bitch. I'm a bad bitch. You're a bad bitch. We're all bad bitches, but there's a lot that comes with being a bad bitch. And I feel like we really need to get, we got to talk about it. We got to get to the nitty gritty of it because I'm tired of pretending like this shit is effortless. I'm tired of pretending that being a bad bitch is an effortless endeavor, (laughs) okay? It's not. The greatest risk, okay, I've ever taken in my life is becoming a bad bitch. Being a bad bitch is probably one of the most thankless jobs (laughs) that there ever could be. Firefighters think they have it hard, but they have never had to put on fake eyelashes in a moving vehicle. Oh yeah, cops can get shot on the job. You've never had to contour your nose in dim lighting, have you? No, you haven't. So how are you gonna compare what you do to what I do? You can't, you can't, (laughs) you can't. Being a bad bitch, having confidence on my worst days You think a doctor is life-saving? That's life-saving. Who am I saving myself? I'm saving myself, okay? Yeah, being a bad bitch is difficult. It's one of the, it is one of the most difficult things that I have ever committed myself and my time to. And I think we should all take this moment to say thank you to every bad bitch you know. Pick up your phone, turn to your neighbors. Turn to your neighbors if they're a bad bitch. If they're not, turn the other way. Turn to your neighbors and say thank you for all that you have done for humanity. Do it right now. Do it right now. Look at your neighbor. I'm looking at my Bratz doll. Thank you. No, really. Looking at Bratz. Thank you for everything you've done to society. Thank you. Okay? Wow. That was my Sermon on the Mount moment. (laughs) Wow. Let me pass the basket around per anyways. Okay. On a serious note, I took to Instagram this week and I asked the girls, I asked the fellow bad bitches because it's all bad bitches who follow me on Instagram. I asked them, I said, what is the hardest part of being a bad bitch? I said, quickly, what is the hardest part of being a bad bitch? And they sent in so many good responses and I am going to read them if I can find where I laid my phone. I'm going to read them and then I'm going to talk about, we're going to talk deeper about being a bad bitch. All right. So I'm not going to name who said these things. Oh my God. Speaking of a bad bitch, Emma Chamberlain just posted a picture. It was the first thing that showed up. Um, and I just read a, like, you know, when people send you requests, I just looked at one and I was like, girl, leave me alone. Um, she's a bad bitch all on her own. And like, she has something to do with this conversation and it's not praise. Okay. Um, so Ask the girls, what is the hardest part of being a bad bitch? I got a lot of great answers, okay? The hardest, meh. The Ashley Gray said hair. Oh, hair. Listen, when I tell you I don't give a fuck about my hair anymore, like my natural hair, I just, I can't. My shit is thick and coarse and thin sometimes. I don't get that. My hair, it will look for, this is not about me. That my, but my, I'm just letting you guys know, my hair will look for moisture and just fuck up my whole day. So that's why this hat, I love her. Thank you so much. Um, Mossberg, Mossberg said being seen only as a sex object. That is really a bad bitch. That is a bad bitch. What the hell? That is a bad bitch problem if I've ever known one. Being desired, but not. No, that's not even the right thing to say. Being lusted after, but not being desired. And I feel like you can be desired, but they don't, a lot of guys really don't want to get to know you. They want to conquer you. You're a conquest, babe. (laughs) You are to men as uh, Africa and the West Indies were to um, colonialists and to Spain and France. They want to conquer you. They want to mount you like a horse. And then they want to leave the corpse behind that is a bad bitch problem that a lot of bad bitches have to deal with 
And like, it really sucks because you have to take a lot of time to kind of really think about if I want to let the way men treat me destroy me. Um, you have to think about, am I willing to give up on the possibility of a real connection? Because every guy that I've ever met in my life has only wanted to conquer me. That's really something that like, I have had so many conversations with my therapist, with my friends, with my own fucking mother about is the way men look at me and treat me. And like, I know so many men at this moment who will drop a motherfucking, they will drop nothing. What, what am I saying? They will, they will drop everything to bed to me, but to get to know me, to speak to me, to listen to the thoughts that run in my head. Ah, the moment I start speaking, they're like, this beast, she's thoughts. She's got thoughts. Why? Shut it. Shh. I make light of it, but bitch, that will fuck with your whole confidence. One of my best friends, beautiful girl, model, amazing. Didn't have her first boyfriend until 24 because there were literally not like no, like men did not want to get to know her. And like, it's so, oh my God, like it's just such a shitty thing because like I always have so many women telling me like, oh, you're so great. You're so this, you're that. And like, I read a comment that somebody left on my YouTube the other day that made me tear up because I was just like, damn, I feel so loved and like, I feel so appreciated and like, and women will look at you and they will see you for who you are. And so many men will look at you and see what you can do for them. They see your features and how that might feel to them. They're really only thinking a lot about their own pleasure. And as a attractive woman, as a bad bitch, you have to really think hard if Every time you have a bad experience with a man, if your end result from it is going to be, fuck all men, I hate men, or are you going to be, I hate that man, fuck that man, there's a better man out there somewhere. I'm still working on that. I make no promises about which one I'm saying because it, it flips and flops. Um, damn. The next... The next one says, getting so caught up in dating politics that you forget who the fuck you are. That's true. Like, that's, it's this, that, that's what I just was saying. Sometimes I feel myself, like, shrinking so hard. Okay, as I'm, like, going through this, I'm wondering if I should just, I'm going to read through all of these. I think what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read through all of these, and then I'm going to, like, go back further in depth, because I feel like I'm kind of jumping from topic to topic, and I don't necessarily want to do that. So I'm going to read them and then pick one and then dive deep. Okay. So having burnout, not ever having enough lip gloss, your own brain telling you, you need to go through shit by yourself. Oh, I can't wait to get back to that one. Being a perfectionist. Someone said all the haters. Um, Nia Simone said maintenance of being a bad bitch. It's fun yet exhausting exhausting okay um nicole said bad bitch mode involves a lot less naps yes ma'am being too fucking shy keeping it up on days you just don't feel like it dealing with an african religious household period waking up people not understanding this can take time to do like i have to plan to get ready Okay, and then being perceived when people think you're one way, but it's way off base. Where do I even start? I'm going to start from lighthearted topic to heavy so we can have a little bit of fun here today. Okay, so, oh, girl, listen, the other day I literally I was I went shoe shopping with my friend. He has taste. I left that damn store and I was like, oh, my God, I'm exhausted. Like, I'm literally tired. And I was carrying my bags out. And I was telling him, I was like, do you know how close I am to being an Ugg girl? They got one pair of Uggs in seventh grade for Christmas and they wore those things to fucking hell. And they wore them with the same two pairs of jeans and the same sweater looking like fucking Rue from Euphoria. Oh, that was kind of mean. I take it back. Looking like Rue. Anyways. Um, wore them down to the ground. Like literally they wore the same outfit every day. And I was like, honestly, do you know how much courage it takes to not give a fuck that hard and to like still feel pleasant about yourself? 
That takes a lot. That takes a lot. In a way, I'm kind of jealous of the Ugg girls because they truly don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. It's not cute, but they don't care. Wow, I wish I could be that girl. But instead, I spend hours doing my makeup. I, it took, I started doing this makeup started doing this makeup around two o'clock and I am now filming at seven. So it took me a good two and a half hours to get my makeup done. Um, but I was, I was also taking my time. It took me another nice, uh, hour to do my hair and it all fell because Kendra Boutique, I love you, but sweetheart, uh, this Brazilian wavy does not hold a fucking curl to save her life. Um, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of effort. And it, it's just exhausting. It is so exhausting. Like this past weekend, I was trying on clothes because I was like, I'm going to go out with my friends tonight. It was a Saturday night. And I was trying on clothes because I was like, I'm going to go out with my friends tonight. I need to look good. And that's the other thing. When you start hanging out with bad bitches, there is, there's no going back. Because like as a bad bitch, like you you really, you have to keep up. You have to keep up. Your friends are kind of looking at you and you looking at your friends. Like, are we, are we, are we looking crusty tonight? Is this a, is, is this a a go night? What are we doing? Because if my friend looks good, like I literally have to ask my friends, Hey, what's the beat situation? And they'll be like full foundation. I lashes, no lashes, lashes, lashes. Okay. And no shade in like if you're just not that girl because everybody has their own style and their own steez. I just like to match my friend's energy in that way. Like because I'm, y'all, I'm not going to lie to you. My self-confidence, she's on a thin line. She's on a thin fucking line. And it's something that I'm working on. I've been working on for a long time. Uh, uh, We're building it. Sand little piece of sand by piece of sand. I thought that I had really healed the con the confidence issue. Um, until it became something that until my looks became something that I thought about often. It's not necessarily something I enjoy thinking about often. Um, I like doing this. I like doing TikTok. I like, you know, being on Instagram, but looking at myself a lot comes with its own fucking issues. Okay? So the maintenance of being a bad bitch, this shit takes time. Looking at yourself for a very long time. The, like, and then there's, like, even the situation about nails. My nails look so cute right now. But, girl, this shit took hours. Hours. I was at the nail salon for hours, and I know that is such a first world problem, but I was at the nail salon for a long ass time. I have not, I normally get my toes done like every three weeks. I've not gotten them done in a while because I do not feel like sitting in a chair and having somebody touch my foot and like just do that. Like the thought of sitting down for a solid three hours to do my toes, I hate the thought of it. I hate it. I hate getting dressed. I hate looking for clothes. I hate having to match my makeup with my clothes. I hate it all. There's so much about it that is exhausting and it's like, and I will do it. I will do it because I'm doing it for myself because I want to look good when I go out and I want to feel good when I go out. And I want to know that when I walk into the room, everybody's going to fucking look at me. I'm not doing this shit for men. Fuck men. Men don't even know that this is considered a light beat. Do you know how many fucking men will look at me in my eyes, in my eyes right now and tell me she doesn't have makeup on? Vibe. Are you fucking dumb? Like... I think a lot of men think that women do a lot of things for them, but that is not the truth. There could only be women in this world, and I will live. I I live for a bad bitch telling me I look good. That's all I want. When I go out, I don't I don't care what guys are doing. I want to know that my fellow ladies think I look good cuz I know they look good, and I tell them that they look good. Okay? We're not doing this for men, okay? So, out of the equation, Right now, it is very hard to maintain. It is expensive. It takes a long time. My beauty routine includes getting my eyebrows done, whitening my teeth, and I whiten my teeth at home by myself. Um, My nails and my toes, if I do those in the same day, I'm not doing anything else that weekend. 
I'm just not. I don't have the energy. I'm not doing it. It takes a nice solid four hours that does not include wait time. My hair is the easiest part of my routine. I pop this wig on like a hat and I move on with my life, okay? Like everything else, like looking for clothes that she can take a long time. And like, and like the, the, you can have all of this. You can have this whole look and, and look good. You can look your best. But if your confidence does not match the look, stay home, stay home. If your confidence doesn't match the look, stay the fuck home. The amount of times that like, I feel such a different energy around me and the energy that I attract when my, my outfit is on 10. I know it's on 10. My looks are on 10. Everything is on 10, but I feel on 10. Okay, there are so many times when I've gotten dressed and I look like a bad bitch and I, the friend I'm going out with, I pull to the side and I'm like, babes, look, my confidence is at a negative 95 right now, okay? I'm feeling super anxious. If I leave at any time during this function, just know it's for me to go have a panic attack in the bathroom, okay? And just, I'm okay, have fun, don't worry about me, I'm gonna get through this. And the amount of times that, like, I thought they were doing fine because they were just like, yeah, let's fucking go. I look hot. You look hot. Let's go. And then they're like, oh, my God, me too, bitch. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. And then we're both like, okay, great. But, you know, then, like, we talk ourselves up and we're like, you're a bad bitch. I'm a bad bitch. We're all bad bitches. And then we go on and we have fun. And, like, but that anxiety is still there. And, like, it's still, she's still trying to do her fucking thing. But I think sometimes you kind of have to fake the confidence a little bit. And, and like, I think that's one of the hardest things for me is because I spent a lot of time building my confidence and building this person up alone and at home. And I think it was a very, very uh, nasty little moment when I realized that the world kind of did not view me in the same way that I view myself. Um, That was like a shitty time for me and I didn't like it. And I think the other thing that goes hand in hand with like appearance and looks and how you feel about yourself and that I want to let you know is actually really normal. It's feeling jealous of people, feeling jealous of, you know, somebody like jealousy is actually a very normal thing. What I think is not normal and unhealthy is when you let your jealousy turn into envy and turn into like very nasty emotions and you let that you let that affect how you treat people outwardly, okay? Recently, like, I've had moments where, like, I felt very jealous of my friends who, like, are skinnier than me, who are, in a way, more, they're more, like, they fit the standard more because I see how people, namely men, treat them versus how men treat me. And it, it's a reminder and it's a nasty little reminder, but I don't think that takes away from who I am and what I look like and the fact that I am a fucking bad bitch. I think, you know, that's not something they're thinking about. A lot of people aren't thinking about that. They're enjoying themselves. And it's like, if there's a guy while you're out who's willing to treat you like shit because you're fat and willing to treat your friend better because they're skinny, Well, first of all, I hope your friend would have an issue with it as much as you would. And also, I would hope that that's not somebody's attention that you want either way. Because that's nasty. That's nasty behavior. Um, And I think definitely in the club scene, like, that is... That is, like, a thing that happens. But I will let you know it's never happened to me. Because I try to... Oh my God, I try to boost my confidence so fucking high. Like when I leave my space, when I leave my zone of comfort, when I'm in bad bitch mode, who the fuck are you? Who are you? Why? Don't touch me. Like I look like the meanest bitch when I'm out and I hope I do because it's intimidating and I think it makes me sexy. So... And I think, like, if you carry yourself with a high level of confidence, even if some guy was going to be like, ew, like, I don't need no fat bitch over here. Bitch, you better look at them like they, they, when they go to open their mouth and say some shit, the mean mug, the bad bitch mean mug. Now, what the fuck are you going to say? You can try, but I hope you're scared too. A while ago, I went, I went to see one of my friends and she's very thin. She, she's a, a friend of mine who used to be a model and she's very beautiful. She's very thin. And we took a picture together and I saw the difference in our bodies and I was, I was just like very triggered 
And I remember like I started feeling very jealous of her because I was like, how must it feel to live in a body that is so praised and held to such high esteem and in comparison to this body that I have like so much shame about, that I carry so much guilt about, that like, you know, I have a lot of issues with. And like, I remember like feeling so jealous that like she's never had thoughts that I've had that, you know, my bodily issues that my appearance issues are not issues that she's ever had. I go through these phases where I push my thoughts of my body like really far in my mind and I just accept it for what it is and then something happens and then like it's right in my fucking face and then I have to be I'm confronted yet again that like this body is not a body that a lot of people find beautiful that a lot of people a lot of people like don't think I should be breathing existing uh because of the way my body looks and like I remember a while ago like one of my videos on TikTok went viral and like I had like half a million likes and I took that bitch off. I, I had to take it off because the amount of people who like they attacked me and they weren't attacking me based on my logic because my logic was right because I'm always right. They were talk attacking me saying like I was fat and I was like, okay, I am fat. Then what else? And like they were like saying things like um, very gruesome things that I think might flag this podcast, to be honest. Um, they were saying a lot of very horrible things and like wishing a lot of ill will on me, wishing death on me, wishing violence and assault on me and a lot of stuff. And like, and I took it down because people started like threatening my life. And I was like, what the hell? That was my first taste of like TikTok hate, but also me understanding that like, there's a lot of thoughts that people have regarding my body that are, that it diminishes me to a corpse. It diminishes me to nothing that like, they don't care what's inside of me. They don't care why I look the way I look. I could have birthed like 90 children. They don't care about that. All they see is this this thing that they've been told is like socially disgusting and unacceptable. And those are not people I need to appease to or get to like me. I don't really give a fuck what those people are doing. But it is a thought that like every once in a while comes into my head and I I am reminded that like there are people that think that way. And I think it's become a little difficult recently for me. And it's come up a multitude of times. So I was at my friend's house and he has a photography studio in his apartment. And attached to the photography studio is a bathroom. And that's the bathroom I use to do my hair, my makeup, whatever. While I was doing my hair and makeup, there he was shooting a boy. And the boy is a straight man, like very fit, very attractive. And I finished doing my hair, finished doing my makeup. I went and I got dressed. And I was wearing this black tube dress. I am a chunky lady, okay? I'm a chunky lady. That's just that. And I put on my little outfit. I knew that, like, the tube dress was, like, a little tight in the gut area. And that, you know, I wasn't, I hadn't looked in the mirror yet. So I was like, mm, I'm not sure, like, if this is the most flattering outfit. Um, but let's try it on regardless. So I tried on the outfit, stood in front of the mirror, and my gut was poking out. Duh, I'm fat. Like, I'm sorry. I cannot hide that the fat. So I was looking at myself, and I was like, I was like, ooh, it's giving maternity. My friend looked at me and he was like, why, why is that the first thing that like came into your mind? And like, and then the boy he was shooting also looked at me and was like, they both had the same look on their face. I was personally confused because I was like, I, it's, I mean, it's just giving maternity. Like I look pregnant. Like, what do you, what do you want me to say? <laughs> and later on, we were talking about my confidence and, and the way I perceive myself and he was like, that day when we were in my studio and you said it's giving maternity, we were just so fucking confused because like nobody thought you looked pregnant. That wasn't a thought that crossed my mind. We were both thinking like, damn, you look really fucking good. But then you say that and it's just like, why are you thinking that about yourself? And I knew that I said that because it was an attempt at self-deprecating humor. But then I started kind of like nitpicking apart why... I fold into self-deprecating humor so much and I realized that a lot of the times I fold into self-deprecating humor because 
I want to say the mean thing out, out loud before somebody else gets a chance to say it or think it. It's almost like putting on this very tough persona so that if they had any mean thoughts about my body, I've confirmed it and there's nothing you can say to hurt me, period. But I find that what a lot of self-deprecating humor does is it actually exposes a lot of your insecurities when people weren't really thinking about things you might be insecure about. So that was the first part of that. The second part of that was, this was a very long conversation. The second part of this was me realizing that it's been very few people who have made me feel certain types of ways about my body. I think a lot of times, like, as a bigger woman, I try to hide the fact that I'm fat. And I know earlier I said that, like, we get, women get ready to look good for other women. That was a cocky girl soundbite uh, that I wanted to post on TikTok. (laughs) Now that we're being candid, I can tell the truth. Um, of course I want guys to look at me when I go out. Of course I want them to tell me that I'm attractive and to come up to me and ask for my number. Um, but I will also make a little loop de loop and say that I have had nights where I look better. Okay, I have had nights where I felt like shit, but I look better than nights where I have felt like a million bucks and looked worse where on the on the night I looked great, felt like shit, nobody approached me, I was ignored. On the nights that I looked like shit, but felt like a million bucks, I was like the light of the room. So confidence really has a lot to do with it. And because I think people are just attracted to fun and good energy and like kind of like this explosion of light that comes out of you when you're having a good time and when you feel okay in yourself, okay? Um, I... So back to the men thing. So I have had times where, you know, I undress and the guy is like so fucking in love with like every bit of me and like they're grabbing every part of me and, and I'm just like surprised. I'm taken back. And then I, it's like the fucking thing just doesn't make sense in my head. It's like, girl, you are not hiding the fact that you are fat. Like, People have eyes. They can see you are fat. And they know that rolls come with being fat. They know that a, a tummy comes with being fat. They know that jiggly thighs come with being fat. Hyperpigmentation comes with being fat. Like, they know that. Nobody's dumb enough to think that they're going to dress you and you're going to look like a plus-size Barbie doll with no fucking, with no stretch marks, no lumps, no bumps, no curves, no dents, no none of that. Like, you'd have to be a literal fucking child to think that that is how that works. And I have to constantly remind myself, like, when I'm getting dressed, like, oh, I won't, uh, like, I'm not going to wear color because this color is going to make me look big um, versus if I wear black. Yeah, sure, black is slimming, but bitch, you're still fat. Like, you are still fat. So just wear the fucking outfit. Wear the outfit. Wear the color. Wear the hot pink. Wear the hot yellow. Look like a fucking peep candy. You are fat, and that is okay. People can see that. You do not turn into... A, a card a piece of cardboard when you wear black like you do not become thania like you like what that's not how it works like people have eyes they can see that you are fat but you just have to be comfortable and confident in yourself and in the way that you look and that i feel matters more than a lot of what you're wearing 